Well, honey, I decided I'm not going to go to the drive-thru. I'm going to use this app to have the food come to us. It's only going to be $17.99 for it to be delivered. And it may or may not be warm. It's worth it, right? I, I can't hear you. The kids are screaming. Yeah, yeah. You know the way I see it? Chick-fil-A is a food group. You know Door Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the brokest one of them all? What's up, Wealth Builder? Today I want to talk about how we went from that to finally getting our dining out spending under control and never looking back. There's one key strategy that we implemented. And we're gonna dive deep into it here in this video. And by the end, you're gonna feel comfortable implementing it for your own household and your own money management. And finally, not spending all your money on food. <laughs> so let's get into it. Well, welcome back to my channel. So much has happened since my last video. For one, the Beautiful Budget Workbook is now out there in three different formats. I've launched its accompanying e-course, Launchpad to Wealth. I've got coaching going here soon. So much excitement. I'll definitely be sure to leave details on all of that in the description so that you can learn more about it, see if it might be a good fit for you. And of course, if you're looking forward to more personal and family finance content from me, more videos like this one, be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. But today's video is all about how we took our worst spending category, I mean, bar none, this was egregious spending that we were doing on food back in 2019. So kind of jump into my budget time machine with me. I took note of just how much we were spending on dining out. So have a look here. It's embarrassing. I almost didn't share that. Um, out of hand. That's all there is to it. And that was that's not groceries. That's just dining out. So a little bit of context here. We had just the year prior in 2018, we had cash flowed our dream wedding and our dream honeymoon. So we were starting to really, really change the tide and see the effects of budgeting using the money mantra. It wasn't called that yet then, but that's a system that we were using and we were doing fantastic with it. We started to invest in 2018 for the very first time. And then we just started to realize, hey, there's, there's this disposable income. We would often split large amounts of money instead of investing more or saving more. And along with that, we were using a lot of our disposable income on food. We had all the apps. We had DoorDash. We had Uber Eats. We loved the convenience of it. We loved not having to sit in San Antonio traffic at the time to stop and get food. I appreciated that I wasn't going to stand over a hot stove after a long day at work. All of these things, all of these excuses of, hey, I don't, I don't want to have to prepare a meal. Let's just get food. Let's have it delivered. And because I was budgeting, I saw these numbers. And I, I just finally threw up my hands and said, that's it. I'm, I'm fed up. That's enough. We have to do something. Because what's not working is me going into the spreadsheet knocking the number down for the budget for dining out and then just crossing my fingers and hoping for the best that was not going to work we needed something drastic a pretty significant change in how we managed our money in order for this dining out spending to really go down the way that it needed to so what did we do and how did we do it we went from always swiping a card of some sort whether it was a debit card for our joint checking account or a credit card and of course we would always pay off our credit card balance in full before the due date so that we never accrued interest. We had finally built the discipline to do that. But we were always swiping a card of some sort when it came to dining out. So our big strategy change, the change to our budget that made all the difference for us was instead of swiping a card, we moved our dining out spending to a cash envelope. Now before you exit out and say I've heard enough, she just went super old school on me, I'm not about to do this. I'm good on it, peace. Stay with me because I thought the same thing. So when I researched the way that other families, other households budget and how they meal plan, I stumbled upon cash envelopes. And I immediately thought what you're probably thinking now, which is that is super old fashioned. 
I don't, who carries cash anymore? Nobody does that. And I don't want to have to fuss with like keeping the balance of it and keeping track of it. And, you know, I, how would I even fit a cash envelope in my wallet? Like, this is silly. I'm not doing this. But again, I knew that it was going to take something drastic, something out of our comfort zone. So I went ahead and I dove in and I'm so glad that I did. Now, my husband was super supportive when I decided, hey, we're doing this cash envelope thing. I mean, poor guy, I really didn't even give him a choice. I was like, we're going to do this. This is what we're doing. If you've ever seen me walk through our budget, which I do here and there on Instagram, and I'm going to start doing more um, here on YouTube, you know that we budget kind of a hybrid 95% joint is what I call it, is, how, is our approach to how we budget. So most of it... Almost all of it is joint. We have a joint checking account. It collects you know, all of our income and then flows through the money mantra all the way up until luxuries. And luxuries is kind of that last section where the money gets split 50-50 and it goes into our individual checking accounts. And that is fun money for each of us. So it's 95% joint model is what I call it. And that's how we budget. And it's worked super well for us since we merged finances. But when we decided to move dining out to a cash envelope, it was kind of an intricate, that was one detail that we really had to think through of, okay, well, we both spend money on dining out and this is all coming from one pot. So are we each going to carry an envelope and just, you know, split it? How are we going to do that? At the time he was working crew and we were actually really, really good about having him go to work with leftovers and snacks and everything that he needed um, because it wasn't super easy for him to leave his shift to go and get food. So we were actually really good about having him go to work with a meal already. And so that helped tremendously. It was kind of a forcing function to keep that going because what we decided was that I was gonna be the one to carry the envelope. I ended up getting a cash envelope wallet and this was like 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll be sure to link it in the description, but it was perfect. I, you know, hole punched it, I had my envelope in here, and I was the one carrying the cash. Because we budget twice a month, for the first budget I would take out 200 bucks out of the ATM, and in the second budget I would take out another 200. So anytime we were actually using it, it was in the evenings or on the weekends, and we were, we were all going together. There is something psychological that you cannot ignore when it comes to handing over cash as opposed to swiping a card. And I felt it. I felt that kind of tinge of, man, I really don't like handing over these bills for food. And it, it, it drove me to not do it so often. And here's the incredible thing that happened. The first, I would say four or five paychecks where we used the cash envelope, we actually ended the budget with money left over in the envelope. So then it kind of begs the question, well, what were you doing at home? Because if you weren't going and dining out so much, something had to change with your meal planning. And you're right, I had to be more deliberate when it came to meal planning. I've had this chalkboard since like 2016 and religiously I was writing in what I was going to cook or if it was gonna be leftovers or even if it was gonna be dining out or like grab and go or Chinese takeout. I would write that on this board. I would have every day mapped out and I would do it by pay period or by budget and I would copy it over onto this board each week. And I had to make sure that the amount of times I was listing dining out on that board, that $200 in a paycheck could kind of support that, right? I didn't wanna set, my, set us up for failure by saying, okay, we're gonna dine out four times this week. I mean, that's just not realistic with the budget that I had set and the cash we had in the envelope. So at first it was a little bit rocky but I was just so amazed at the fact that we had bills left over in that envelope the first handful of times that we did it. We did this for about three months and then we realized, hey, we've built up the discipline. I think we can go back to debit cards now. And that's what we did. And ever since then, I set the same budget every single time. You'll see me when I write my budgets now, 200 per pay cycle. And that's what we strive for. Now we're human. Okay, do I go over that budget sometimes? Absolutely. Do I have those pay cycles where I'm in a funk and you know we're dining out here, there, everywhere? Maybe we you know use DoorDash a couple times in a pay cycle? Absolutely. I'm only human, but I can tell you that on the whole, this has been the most drastic, kind of most improved award goes to dining out. 
and it's because we moved to a cash envelope. Now here's what I recommend if you're going to adopt this system is that you do what we did and you only do one category at a time. Because when you try to do more than one envelope, what gets really tempting to do is this cash shuffle where, okay, maybe you've run out of money in dining out, but then you hop over to your, your gas envelope and you take money from that one and put it into dining out. So now you're shuffling money between the envelopes. It can be very tempting to do that. But here's the thing, you're shifting to cash envelopes to build discipline. So have that discipline, have the discipline to say, you know what, when this guy is empty, that's it. That's it. I'm gonna have to go and purchase more groceries and cook more. We're gonna have to be more intentional with leftovers. You know, we're gonna go ahead and plan, you know, like a potluck, something. Something has to happen because that money has been exhausted. And that's what it's gonna take, is that level of commitment to what you're doing. But you don't have to worry about the shuffling if you only do one envelope. That's why I also think that this strategy could work, especially for those of us who really have bad habits when it comes to swiping a card or shopping online. When you move to a cash envelope, you don't have that choice. Amazon doesn't take cash envelope. DoorDash doesn't take cash. Uber Eats doesn't take cash. So it was a forcing function for us. We, didn't, we couldn't use those apps. We had to do something else. We had to be more deliberate when it came to our meal planning. So there were these second and third order effects that really just revolutionized how we approached our food budget. So that is one of my biggest pro tips is only do one cash envelope, but it all starts with knowing, knowing how you spend first of all. Learn your money a little bit. Learn how you typically spend in that category that you're gonna to move to a cash envelope so that you can challenge yourself set a lower amount to go into that envelope and have it be an actual reasonable challenge. Now I have provided a link in the description to my free resource library where you can get a super cute turquoise polka dot cash envelope for free that you can print out and you can start cash spending in a category that is weak for you. You can print multiple of those envelopes if you wanted to and do multiple at a time that's there for you as an option. I also sell seasonal sets of cash envelopes in the Beautiful Budget shop. I'll also link that. And if you happen to sign up for Launchpad to Wealth and you purchase a workbook, the workbook can accommodate cash envelope users. There are areas in the workbook specifically for marking in your cash envelope budgets, what you end up with at the end. And then in the e-course, I actually just added a whole bonus module on how to use the inserts that I provide with these. They're basically their own mini expense trackers. I have matching ones for each envelope and you basically can use that to track all of your spending inside of that particular category. I provide you with a set of six spring themed cash envelopes and I take you from A to Z when it comes to budgeting, how you implement these into your money management. And if you've ever used cash envelopes or you plan on giving them a shot now after seeing this video, drop a comment, let me know your experience or what category you plan on putting into a cash envelope. I'd love to hear more about it, help you where I can, because like I said, these were a game changer for us. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.